people welcome to my channel I'm Arpita Karwa and in this video I'm going to talk about certain things that you must keep in mind which will help you in preparing for your UGC net exam guys net exam is approaching and all the students are getting overwhelmed with each passing day because somewhere they think that they are not able to recall somewhere they feel that they are not able to complete the course some people are struggling with revision others are struggling with notes and there are so much uh, going inside the head of every student so then on popular demand I thought of making a video wherein I can tell you certain last minute tips that you can use if you're preparing for UGC net exam these tips are scientific I have been using them since quite a long time and I know that they work so please make sure that you do make a note of these tips and if you have not incorporated it in your study schedule then do make sure that you do it today itself so the first important tip that I would like to tell you is that reading is not learning Okay, reading doesn't help. Reading will never lead to remembering most of the information. What happens is that students keep on reading and rereading their notes or the textbooks or certain study material. What happens is that when you're merely reading anything, just highlighting or just marking those things, you will somewhere see that you are getting into the trail of rote learning or rote memorization rote re memorization is basically ratta marna and ratta marna will never help in any exam why so i will tell you there are certain tips that you can use in order to learn actively okay and that will make sure that you know your study routine is easy it's fun and you are able to retain more information in a limited period of time for example there is this writer called mariana warners who has written a work called indigo mapping the waters now if you just try to memorize it again and again through rote learning ki bas main padhta jaun ya padhti jaun and i'll be able to remember this particular work at times you'll see that you will fail now I'll give you another strategy to learn the same thing and that is a method of active learning. For example, if I say that Mariana Warners, Warners go connected to Waters, you can just twist the surname a bit, Mariana Waters and the book that she has written is Indigo Mapping the Waters. So now you can see how Indigo Mapping the Waters is related to Mariana Warners because Warners is very much connected to waters and by associating by using a symbol water to link two things you are able to retain them better and see you don't need to revise it any further because ye aapke dimaag mein ek bar mein set ho gaya hai even if this question comes in the exam paper and you have not revised it you will see that somewhere you will be able to recall it this is the benefit of using active study methods now there are so many methods that you can use you can even devise your own active studying methods for example i used to quiz myself okay every time when i used to study a particular topic after i end the topic i made sure that i have a quiz okay i used to play quiz with myself so i was the opponent and i was the main person and then we used to play quiz and then i used to see how much i'm able to recall you can connect information to real life in order to recall that better so that is also another technique which you can use for active learning so number one point that i would uh, like to bring that to you is that please do not merely read books okay or merely read information try to develop certain techniques through which you are able to remember better try creating symbols associations quizzes and flashcards and all these things will help to make your study time enjoyable and also you will be able to retain more the second important tip that i would like to bring to you is say no to multitask now i have seen students doing this thing they try to study simultaneously using their facebook or whatsapp or any other uh, social networking site and they try to balance these two things guys we know that buddha has said that life is all about balance but that balance should not be uh, applied in studying because whenever you multitask you would see that somewhere the time you require in order to learn a thing will increase and the quality of learning will decrease because your mind which can do one thing very efficiently is occupied with two things you cannot actually believe that when you are chatting your memory is used your mind functions when you are typing you are actually 
thinking of what you need to type next or what you need to comment next your mind is actually working on this thing now when mind energy is occupied there how can you even think that the mind will able to give you proper energy or will support you in the best manner while you are studying so it is very important that you say no to distractions make sure that whenever you sit down to study you completely get into a distraction free zone you can put dnd on your mobile there are so many apps available for windows for android for apple which will help you to clear all the background apps which are running in your mobile while you're studying because there are people who subscribe to my online course and they have a option that they can use their mobile phone in order to open the website and listen to the audio lectures now what these people do is that while they are listening to the audio lectures they keep on simultaneously chatting with people now that would not help because when you are actually listening a audio lecture you need to focus completely on what i am speaking and you need to try to comprehend it understand it and then write that in your copy so this is how it works so get into a no distraction zone whenever you're studying if you are studying on a pc or on a laptop make sure that you have different softwares which can block all the other uh pop up which keep on coming on your computer screen suppose if you have connected your facebook or gmail to with your computer you would see that every time you receive a mail a new pop up will come and then somewhere your mind will have this urge that okay just let me click on it and just let me see what the mail talks about or what that message talks about so that never helps the flow in which you are studying that flow gets broken every time you invest your time in any other activity it's good to take breaks but then use the social media thing when you are taking break and don't use it while you are actually studying so every time if you sit down to study for next 30 minutes and after 30 minutes you take a 5 minute break it's completely all right if you use the social media or any other uh, social media platform while you are on the break but while you are studying don't ever use this because that will somewhere restrict the energy of your brain and you would not be able to give your 100% to your work and if you don't give your 100% then don't expect that life will give you 100% back because what we give that we receive the next important thing that you can use when you're studying is that you can become a teacher guys i'm telling you teaching something will help you a lot whenever you teach a certain information you see that you are able to remember that better than any other mode of studying why so because when we teach we are actually uh, comprehending we are understanding and then we are trying to deliver the message that is there in our mind and while you are doing this you will see that somewhere you will have certain questions popping up in your head and simultaneously there would be a dialogue in your head when the question would be answered by the logical parts of your brain what happens is that whenever you put a question to your brain your brain automatically tries to answer it by the help of the information which is already there in the brain same thing happens when you teach like when i used to study for ugc net exam and uh, i used to study in my institute okay i have a institute wherein i teach soft skills and personality development to students uh, coming from mba colleges or job seekers or corporate training uh, used to go in my uh, institute and i used to study in my institute so when i used to sit in my institute i have a huge whiteboard in front of which i used to teach there was nobody in the room i used to teach myself i used to assume that there are students sitting in front of me and whatever i have learned i try to write that on the board and try to explain it to people and while i used to do that i saw how much clarity i got on every topic like theory criticism literary movement all these topics were on my tips when i used to teach them because you become so confident when you teach already you feel as if there's a dialogue going between uh, the two parts of your brain and one is asking the question and the other is answering and you feel so surprised that you've learned so much and now your brain can actually answer complex question so that is how teaching helps so become a teacher if you're not studying in a group you can even teach individually assume that there are students sitting in front of you and teach whatever you study the last and the final thing that i would like to address in this video is that make use of mind maps now i will tell you how mind maps helps I've already talked about this thing in one of my videos where we now say that 
our mind works best by associating information so when you associate two informations your mind is able to learn better and is able to recall in a more efficient manner mind maps work in the same process mind map will link unconnected information together and then just by remembering one information you will actually be able to remember all the information to which that particular information was connected to there can be three kinds of mind maps i used to use these three mind maps the first one is when you are trying to make a flow chart of the summary for example there are plays like tambourine by christopher marlow now such plays have so many characters and so many incidents so in that case i used to use a link or a chain sort of mind map wherein i used to link and uh, step by step move towards the end of the play or end of the novel okay so it was a kind of flow chart or a kind of chain that i used to make when i was reading such novels the second type of mind map is used when you want to have a comparative analysis and you want to take in different or contradictory or confusing information together for example if you're reading charles dickens play i'm pretty sure that you will come across several characters and all those characters seem to be very similar they would be almost on the same line so in that case what i used to do is that i used to divide a page into four parts i used to mark the four novels that i'm taking and i used to list all the important characters of each and every novel now what happens is that when i'm looking at that page i can actually see the uh, characters and i can see the division that for example if i think that mrs havisham is an oliver twist i can totally when i look at the page i know that no i was wrong it's here and this character is there and this character is in this uh, particular novel and this character is in this particular novel so ek baar mein you are able to glance everything and if you have a photogenic memory or if you are a visual learner then this works miracle because ye page aapke dimag mein chhap jata hai you get so confident that when you have a question in net exam you are pretty sure that your answer is right you don't work on the guess thing okay you just don't think ki acha yaar shayad ye hoga because that image is so prominent in your brain ki jaise hi question aata hai you know that yes this particular character was listed on the left side of the page on near the top margin so this is particular work in which this character is from the third and the most important mind map technique that you can use is when you are reading any poetry now this mind map that i'm telling you is called associations you kind of take out branches from a tree or from a particular concept and then you try to uh, talk about different things let's take example of ode to gratian on by keats now when you are looking at this poem what you can do is that you can just write ode to gratian on in the center of the page then you can take one branch and you can write summary and you can then and write one one point from each paragraph like the poem has five stanzas so from each stanza you can write one important point whatever that paragraph is talking about then you can have another branch from the same uh, title that can talk about the quotes that you have to remember for example uh, heard memories are sweet but unheard are sweeter now this is a quote which is very important and it is from ode to gratian on so you can just write that in the second part now you can have another branch from the title and that branch can talk about themes so you can say that art and permanence of arts or time is a important theme in this particular work so that can come into the third segment the fourth segment can talk about references for example in this poem we find that there are so many greek references just like uh, we have it endymion by keats so you can just write greek references in plays or in poems like uh, wasteland or prelude food or uh, paradise lost you will find so many other references so that section would be a quite bigger so this is how you can categorize things so whenever you are reading ode to gratian on you just need to glance through the mind map and you are through with it you're done with the revision you don't even need to go to that particular page in the book from which you have taken the points so this is how it works and i hope that this helps because if you incorporate these things in your study routine i'm pretty sure that you will be unbeatable in this net exam so we'll be meeting very soon in the next video lecture do remember i post videos every saturday and every sunday on my youtube channel to help utc net english aspirants you can go to my channel and look at all the videos that will definitely help you in your net preparation also at the same time if you have any doubts any questions you can write that in the comment section below do let me know what are the study techniques that you use when you prepare for net exam
other than that you can go to all the social media platform and follow me on the different social media so that you are updated and you are notified every time I post a go net quiz other than that if you have not visited my website then do go and check arpatakarva.com check the online course that I am offering exclusively for UGC net aspirants and if you like the list of writers that are displayed on my website then you can definitely join me in my next online batch so that's it for this video lecture we'll meet soon in the next video lecture till the time we meet next happy learning keep loving literature